it's Trish with Crafting Cousins. We are so happy you stopped by our channel today. If you are new here, welcome. We hope you like what you see and will come back often. If you are returning, thank you so much. We truly appreciate you. Today we will be starting our Christmas in July series. If you like to make your Christmas decor and gifts, or if you sell at craft fairs, now is the perfect time to get started. For my part in this series, I will be making a piece of Christmas decor, an ornament, and then I will make a project that would be perfect to give anyone on your list. So let's get started. Hey y'all, let's craft. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this old pair of rubber boots that I got from Goodwill Outlet for a dollar. Now I will say they look like they're for the same foot, but they were sold as a pair, so we're going to go with it. Two of these microfiber towels that I got from the Dollar Tree, some of this greenery garland that I had left over from last year, some poinsettias and some Christmas florals that I had left over from last year. I got these from like the Dollar Tree and probably Ollie's. Some floral foam from the Dollar Tree, a black permanent marker, a paper pattern that I cut out. It's a two and a half inch by one and a half inch rectangle, some gold glitter vinyl that I had left over from another project, but if you don't have this, you could use gold cardstock, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my little pattern piece and I'm gonna cut out the gold buckles for my Santa boots. Now all I did was hold my paper up against this vinyl and cut around it, and then I would trace the inside and cut that out. I am only using this gold glitter vinyl because I had it left over and had it on hand. If you don't have any of this, you could use the gold glitter cardstock. I think that would work really well. It just needs to be flexible so that you can glue it onto your boots to have the buckle look. Now I'm going to take my boots and these actually have a green sole and I wanted it to be solid black. So my solution for this was I grabbed a black permanent marker and I just went around both of my boots and I colored in the sole. This blended in and it looked perfect once I was finished. Now I did completely wear out one marker and I had to grab one of another one to finish this up. Now I'm gonna take my buckle pieces and glue them onto my boots. I did grab some of my Fix All Adhesive that I get from the Dollar Tree because I thought that it would stick to this rubber better than just hot glue would. So I put that down and then I use a little hot glue in the corners to hold it until it sets. Now I'm going to take those two microfiber mops that I got from the Dollar Tree and I fold it in half and then you're gonna see like a ditch where that fiber stuff isn't. That's where I'm gonna cut because I wanted two equal pieces and I didn't want to get that mess all over the place. Now I did have to cut down the ends because they're a little long. And then I'm gonna take some more of my Fix All Adhesive and I put a good bit into the middle of this and then I use some hot glue around the outside and I glue one one piece to each side of my boot. Now I did have to cut it down again because it's gonna to be too long, but the seams will meld together and you won't even be able to tell it once you fluff it up. Now that we have that one done, we're gonna do the same thing to the other one. I just take my two pieces, I put down some of my super glue fix all adhesive for that strong hold, and I use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place until that can set. I'm gonna put both pieces around the top and I have an adorable pair of Santa boots. Now I'm going to take some of my floral foam and I'm just going to stick it down in there. This is going to give me something to put my floral pieces in, but it's also going to fill out my boots so they look more full at the top. Now I'm gonna take that greenery garland. I got this from Walmart last year. It's like three or four dollars. You get a really big piece of it. And I just cut pieces off for all of the florals that I do during the Christmas season. I'm gonna cut off some pieces and stick in the top of that. That's just gonna give me a base. And then I'm going to take my florals. I had this really sparkly red stuff that I think I got from Ollie's. I cut some pieces off and stuck that in there for some height. 
Then I'm going to use these poinsettias. They came from the Dollar Tree and I just cut those off and stick those down in there. And you're just going to add whatever you like. You don't have to use poinsettias, just whatever will give you some color that you really like for your Christmas decor. I'm gonna add in a couple of these berry pieces and then once I get these in there and I'm happy with how it looks, this project is finished. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these little wooden tags that I got from Dollar General. These come in a pack of five. One of these furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree. A mini Santa hat that I got from Hobby Lobby. I got mine last year, but I did notice today that they're already starting to put out their Christmas crafts. A paw print that I got from the computer. I just Googled Paul SVG a jot permanent marker from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in white, some red and white baker's twine, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. This one's gonna be quick and simple. I'm gonna start off by staining my wooden tag. I'm gonna be doing some distressing on this and I wanted this darker color to show through. Now this is completely optional. You could leave it, you know, the natural color if you don't want to distress it or if you want the natural wood to show through. Once I get it stained, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give it a really good coat on the front and the back and then I'm just going to leave it to completely dry. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to take my paw print and I scribble on the back of it, then I lay it on my tag and trace over it. This is going to transfer it onto my project. Once I got my paw on there, I decided I wanted to add the name as well. So I wrote it on the paper so that I'd make sure my dimensions were right. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to scribble, scribble on the back and then I'll lay it on there and trace over it. And this is going to transfer it to my project. Now I'm just going to use one of my jot permanent markers and fill this in. You could do this with paint and a paintbrush if you prefer. I just like the control I get with the markers. And then I'm going to use a fine tip marker to fill in the name. Now I'm going to take my sanding block and just go over the edges of this and I just kind of distress it, make it look rustic. I like that look and this is why I stained it. Now we're going to take some of our baker's twine. I cut off a piece, fold it in half and tie a knot. Then I'm just going to push the end through there and I'll take that and pull the ends through the loop and that gives me a hanger. I'm going to use one of my little mini Santa hats and I want it to go on at an angle so I put some hot glue on one corner and I glue that down. Then I'm going to put some hot glue on the back of it and flip it over and with that this project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a piece of three quarter inch plywood that I had left over from another project. This piece is 24 inches long and 14 inches wide. And if you need to have your plywood cut, Home Depot will actually do those cuts for you. Four tomato steaks. I got mine from the Dollar General for a dollar each, but if you don't find them at yours, you can also get these at Home Depot. Some wording that I cut out using my Cricut. I'm going to be doing a reverse stencil effect, but if you don't have a cutting machine, you can get stickers from the craft store, or you could use one of the ways that we show you guys to do lettering for your projects. Some Waverly chalk paint in ocean and in white 
a brad nailer if you're not comfortable using a battery powered one you could use a hammer and nails a heavy duty d-ring hanger some min wax wood finish in ebony and some wood glue that i got from the dollar tree so the first thing I needed to do was figure out where I needed to cut my wood dowels. I'm going to lay it up against my plywood and then mark how long I need it to be. I did mark the long ends first and then I took the other two dowels and I laid down and I made sure that I accounted for the wood dowel on either side. That way it's going to meet up and make a frame. Now I'm going to take this outside and I'm going to cut it with my chop saw but if you're not comfortable using that kind of saw you could do it with a hand saw. Now I am going to paint my plywood and for mine I'm using the Waverly Chalk Paint in Ocean. This is going to be a gift for my granddaughter and she wanted the wording to look a dark blue color so this was what I decided to use. I'm going to put a really heavy coat only on the top and then I will leave this to dry. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to transfer my vinyl letters over to my project using some transfer tape. Now, I will say that this vinyl that I was using was about five or six years old, and it didn't want to stick very well. So I did have a pretty hard time getting this down, but I just kept working with it until I got it pressed down. And then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in the ocean, and I'm going to paint over the top of it. This is just going to seal it down so that when I put my white paint on top of it to do the reverse stencil effect, it won't bleed up under my letters. If you'll use your same color that you used for the base and then let it dry, this works perfectly. Once that paint was dry, I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in white and I'm going to do a pretty heavy coat right on top of this. Now you can see that you can still see your vinyl under there, but this is not bleeding up under the vinyl and it's going to give you a crisp look once you start peeling it off. We'll put a heavy coat on the top of this and then I'm going to set it aside and let it completely dry. Now that our paint is dry, I'm going to use my sanding block and just kind of go over this just to kind of distress it, give it that rustic farmhouse look. And then I'm going to use my pokey tool and start removing my vinyl. This is such a satisfying process. I love seeing the words pop out and you can see how crisp they look whenever you start taking the vinyl off. Now you do kind of have to look for it a little bit, but if you dig up under there, you can catch the edge and pull it off and it just always comes out looking so crisp and clean. I did this for all the signs that I used to sell at craft shows and everyone always loved how they looked. I always got so many comments on this process. We'll finish taking off all of our vinyl and now we are going to work on our framing for our sign. I took my dowels that I had taken outside and cut down with my chop saw, and I'm just going to use my min wax and stain each one of them. Now, you don't have to use min wax for this. It's actually pretty messy, and it takes a while to dry. I was actually working with it before it dried, and I ended up getting it all over my piece. You can use paint to stain these with, just water it down. You could just paint these, or you can use the furniture repair markers from the Dollar Tree to stain these as well. Now that everything is stained and painted, we're going to put this together. I just lay out my dowels so that I can see how my frame looks. Then I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna use some wood glue on one side and I push it back up against it and I use my electric brad nailer to shoot in three little brads. We're gonna go around and do both long sides and I put three brads in each side. Now I am using this, well, it's not really electric, it's kind of battery powered. My husband got it for me for our anniversary and I absolutely love it. But if you're scared of these, you can just use some little brads and a hammer and this will work just as well. You just want to make sure you get those brads in there so that it will hold your frame in place. Now that we have our piece all together, I just need to add a hanger. I find my center and I use my awl to put a starter hole there. Then we're just going to screw in our D-ring hanger and once we get that in, this project is complete.
you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all!